Welcome, and thank you for coming to the 2017 Water Campfire. The four leaders sitting behind me have done an outstanding job leading their teams all summer. And it's out of respect for the leaders and the ceremony that we ask that you remain silent throughout the ceremony and hold your applause. A role model. Trustworthy, inclusive, resilient, smart, happy, kind, humble, creative, a good sense of humor, confident, organized, uplifting, responsible, decisive, and genuine. Those are some of the words Woodburn and Coogee won that I would use to describe Walt. In his seven years at camp, he has made an impact on many people of all ages just by being himself. Through his words and actions, he has been a role model to those around him. Whether it was being a junior leader in activities when he was 12, or helping out his leader Charlie Stelnicki with Sunday events when he was 14. General George Custer said, it's not how many times you get knocked down that count, it's how many times you get back up. I've witnessed Walt's unfaltering resiliency firsthand all summer. During the Sunday event treasure hunt, Walt struggled to find Irv's curve on Deerhorn Road. He went from first place to last, though he still held his head high and maintained his cool when he returned to the lodge. Despite holding down fourth place all summer long, I have never seen him down. In fact, the first words out of his mouth, without skipping a beat, first and fun. It must be true because every time I see Walt, he has a big smile on his face. I first got a chance to see Walt's goofy side six years ago when he donned his shirt as a ninja mask with the Navajo leader Palmer Taylor and I during camper hunt. That fun-loving, goofy side never faded. When he was 13, he made myself and other counselors crack up by simply saying, I'm Walt. Mm -hmm. Anytime he saw us in sailing, he would sail to the float boat and begin circling us, pivoting his head staring at Matt Gust and I with a straight face. In Scalp, he buried himself in leaves and branches, successfully staying hidden until the goalie box. This summer, Professor Zaffron gave many lectures in Kuji One, where we learned about the laws of attraction, the tortoise, tortoise and the hare, and Zerp. I don't think anything has made me laugh harder in, this, in a long time. Walt's goofy side is matched equally by his responsibility and intelligence. You immediately get a sense of that just by talking to him. He takes time to examine his surroundings and see what needs to be done, or if anyone needs help. His leader saw this in him when he was 12, and given the responsibility of leading one of the groups around camp in the chariots of fire. In sailing, he would find the kids who needed help rigging their boats and lend a hand. This summer, he spent a lot of time at the stables to the point where it really felt like we had a fourth staff member. We never had to ask him to help, he just did it on his own. Walt, it is for these reasons and many others that you are such a well-rounded young man who brings so much to Camp Deerhorn. So tonight may signal the conclusion of your camper career, but clearly a new chapter is beginning. And I hope you will be a staff member for a long time. I know camp will be a better place if you are. I'm going to end with one last anecdote about Walt. Last Sunday, I was walking around the waterfront and I saw Walt sitting on a picnic table with Nick Chu. They were practicing a song for the campfire that evening. The song they were practicing was You've Got a Friend in Me by Randy Newman. I couldn't think of a more fitting song for Walt to be singing at the campfire or a better way to summarize his camp career because everyone has a friend in Walt. It is my pleasure to present the 2017 Apache leader, Walt Zaffer. What is a regular fellow? What does a regular fellow look like? One might say a regular fellow looks regular, but I'd argue that a regular fellow looks anything but that. The line of the Deerhorn Creed that we have all heard is, to be a regular fellow, a pal to other campers, a friend in manner and deed, A booster rather than a knocker, an optimist rather than a pessimist, and a gentleman under all conditions and circumstances. I don't know about you, but a long list of incredible qualities for one person to have isn't very regular. Someone you call regular would be a first year camper in D session. This kid wants to win and have fun just like everyone else. 
Somewhere along the way, this camper would learn to be a much better person during his time in camp. If you couldn't tell, I'm this little desession camper. The year is 2011, and I have, no, I have no clue what is going on. I have no idea where I am, and most importantly, I have no idea what camp means. As I wandered through my youthful camper days, I had so many questions. What's for dinner? What's milk line? What's a Kuji? What's an ADOC? What's a leader? There goes Walt Zaffron, 10 year old kid, a huge grin on his face, walking in the completely wrong direction. <laughs> As a young camper, I didn't really know what I was doing. Sure, I went to activities, made friends, did everything everyone else did. I was regular. But what I want to talk about is transforming from regular into a regular fellow. The one thing that will take a little wide-eyed camper and turn him into a fellow of the creed is other people at camp. With other campers guiding me through camp, my questions quickly got their answers. Dinner is lasagna. <laughs> The milk line is when you go into the lodge, <coughs> get a graham cracker, and a carton of milk, and talk with your kuji. You sleep in a kuji, and that big red A in the water, it's the adok, it's where you swim. Having older campers pass around knowledge and wisdom is what made me into a mature leader. When I say leader, I don't mean a team leader, I mean a person who can lead. Every year, there are plenty of kids that become better people and better leaders. Not being picked as a deerhorn leader does not mean you are not a leader. Right now, you're looking at a regular person. Being exceptional does not require recognition. I was once a lost kid with an unlimited supply of random questions and I was shaped by deerhorn and the people I met there into a regular, a regular fellow. There's a big difference between being regular and being a regular fellow. What I'm emphasizing is that a regular fellow is one who embodies the creed in silence. One who does not boast about himself and all of his goodness. One who strives for positive impact, not recognition. One who spreads sunshine and good cheer just for the fun of it. And not being noticed doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. In fact, it can mean the exact opposite. By not being idolized, you are regular. And regular may sound like one of the most bland words you'll ever hear. And you'll also may question why I wrote an entire speech on being average. But the creed does not emphasize being special. It's not what people view you as, but instead the actions you do when no one is watching. The regular fellows are the ones who will help you out when it doesn't benefit themselves. Regular fellows are the one, ones who will answer the curious questions. The regular fellows will pick you up when you are down. The regular fellows will be your shoulder to cry on. The regular fellows are the ones who are in it for the sake of kindness. These acts of regular fellows Help me become a better person at camp from when I was a little kid to now when I'm 16. The journey of changing from an asker of questions to an answer of them has allowed me to make countless friendships that will last a lifetime. I'd like to thank those people that helped make camp so special for me. First, I'd like to thank my brother, Owen. You led me throughout our years at Deerhorn and explained 
camp actually meant. From before my first days as a camper, when you taught me what scalp was in your bedroom, all the way to supporting me build my leader sandcastle, I am thankful for everything you've done for me. To Ryan and Kiana, for an awesome summer full of cool events. I can't remember ever having so much fun on Sundays. To the Browbridges, for giving me the opportunity to spend a full summer at my favorite place on earth. To Henry McQueen, for helping me from the beginning of a session with every decision. To my 15 year old campers, because I couldn't have asked for a better crew of goons. To my past leaders, for being the light that guides me through the process of maturing. And to my fellow leaders, we have done so much together. And I couldn't have asked for a better group of guys to spend this amazing summer with. TJ. You're one of the most genuine kids I know. I know I can always count on you to be there for me. And I will always be there for you. Thistle. I feel like we've known each other forever. I've never laughed harder in my life than with you. Ever since Coogee 14, when we met, I've cherished our friendship every day again. Parker, even though we only met just now, or it felt like it, and we've only known each other for three years, we've bonded so much, and I couldn't be happier to call you one of my best friends in life. I love you guys to death, and I enjoyed every moment of our time together from before camp, with our late night group calls, all the way to our last moments at camp. You guys made this the best summer of my life, and I can't wait for the many years to come on staff. Lastly, I'd like to thank my parents for giving me the incredible opportunity to be a camper at Deerhorn. Without you letting me come to Deerhorn every year, None of these friendships would be possible, and I am forever grateful for having this second home. I have always struggled with the meaning of camp, and still to this day, I can't really say what the meaning is, because my guess is as good as yours. <coughs> if I could summarize camp in a few sentences, this is how it would go a community of brothers where everything you are you are accepted where being your own self is regular and being able to confide in others is a breeze where you learn to become a better person and help others around you better themselves where being lost is where you are supposed to be and wherever you look there will be a fellow camper to lead you in the right direction thank you your dreams away for now I won't see you for some time I am lost in my mind I am lost in my mind Mama once told me You're already home where you feel love I am lost in my mind I can't 
lost in my life. that brig lane coming? How's your engine running? Is that bridge getting built? Are your hands getting filled? <coughs> Won't you tell me, my brother? Cause there are stars up above we can start. How's that brick lane coming? How's your engine running? Is that bridge getting built? Are your hands getting filled? Won't you tell me, my brother? Cause there are stars up above. We can start. Lost in my mind, no, I get lost in my mind. Lost, I get lost, I get lost in my mind. Lost in my mind, no, I get lost in my mind. Lost, I get lost, I get lost. Oh, I get lost. Eight years ago, my little brother came to camp with me for the first time. Being a young first year camper, my parents told me, make sure you keep an eye on him. But it just wasn't necessary. The moment he stepped off the bus, he hit the ground running. I knew right then that Deerhorn would become a second home to him like it had for me. To fully understand TJ's outgoing personality, we need to go back further. Early on, he was appointed the King of Glencoe, our hometown, by my family. Anywhere we went in town, echoes of, hey TJ, or what's up TJ, could be heard. He never had a sense of stranger danger as a kid, which, of course, really scared my parents. But it only helped to make him more of the outgoing guy he is today. When my sister and I had friends over, TJ was always there talking to them. All of my friends loved him and enjoyed his company, despite being several years older than him. At times, TJ, that age gap has been difficult, too. But once he started coming to camp, that age gap seemed to, uh, the gap seemed to fade. 
Your passion for camp was immediately evident the minute we left. You began <coughs> to become homesick or camp sick. Counting down the days until you got to reunite with your Deerhorn family, always asking me questions about camp and my experience. That passion for camp is what made you such an integral part of Deerhorn. Just like at home, here you made friends with people of all ages. If I could summarize the way I feel about your camp career in one word, it would be proud. I'm proud of the way you carry yourself on a daily basis, proud of how you lend a helping hand to anyone who needs it, Proud of the way you stepped up to become a leader. Proud to be your brother. Being able to share Deerhorn with you is such a unique experience that not many brothers can claim. I'm so happy that I got to be your Kuji One counselor this and live uh, with you all summer. I can't express how meaningful it has been to me to become so much closer with you. This is an experience we will never forget, forging a strong lifelong bond all because of this amazing place we call home. I've had a long Deerhorn career, and I don't know what the future holds for me, but I know you have many years on, on staff to come. I know you will do an exceptional job in the next phase of your Deerhorn career. Without further ado, I'd like to present the 2017 Chippewa leader, my brother, Tyler James Farrell. Before I started coming to camp, I remember Ryan coming back from camp at the end of the summer. And he would tell my parents and I how much fun he had at Deerhorn. I was just waiting for the day that I could come back from camp and tell my parents how much fun I had that summer. When Ryan would talk to me about camp, I would always try to picture the magical place he calls Deerhorn. The next year was when my parents decided to let me go to camp. I was an eight-year-old little boy, and I was coming for a session. That summer was my brother Ryan's Voyager year. This made it easy for me to uh, make friends because Ryan had already made a name for himself. When I got to camp, I was a little different than, than my peers. I wasn't homesick. I was just very happy and excited to participate in all the awesome camp activities. From the moment I got to camp, I 100% agreed with Ryan when he would when he would say Deerhorn is his home away from home. Camp is a very special place for me. Not only because I've been coming for half of my life, but because I've made friendships that I know will last a lifetime. Deerhorn has always been a place where I could come and let loose and have the best time that I possibly could have. It's not just camp itself that makes this place so special. It's the people. Every year when I would get off the bus, I'd be so excited to see all my friends. Friends from the following summers. This is an obvious reason why people come back to camp summer after summer. Because it's not only a place where you can truly blossom as a person and strive to be better at something every day. This is why we implement the creed in our daily activities. My favorite lines from the creed are, To be kind, because manliness requires kindness. To be a regular fellow, a pal to other campers, a friend in manner and deed, a booster rather than a knocker, an, op an optimist rather than a pessimist, and a gent gentleman under all con conditions and circumstances. These lines are special to me in so many ways because if you walk around camp, and just observe. You can see that many campers and staff members have taken these lines to heart and truly understand the meaning of camp. During the school year, I was writing a paper for my English class, and I found myself at a loss of words on how I could get my point across. While I was brainstorming ideas, I realized that if I just used a line from the creed, that it would get my, way, my, my point across in a creative way. I decided to use to be a booster rather than a knocker, an optimist rather than a pessimist. When we all got our papers back, mine had a phrase that was circled and said, come see me after class. <laughs> My teacher circled the line that I used from the creed. She asked me how I thought of it. I responded with, I didn't. I didn't think of it myself. 
It's from the Deerhorn Creek. She was amazed by the concept of camp, and that right there just proves how camp changes people. There have been so many people that have helped me along this journey and made me the person that I am today. And I want to thank, thank them for it. Thank you, Ryan, for being the best brother that I could ever ask for. I will always, I will always know that through thick and thin, you always have my back, and I love you. Thank you, Kiana, for making the most out of this summer and all the years that I've been at camp. And I was very sad to see you go this summer, but I know that you're going to be the best English teacher ever. Thank you, Patrick and Amy. For always making sure that this, always making sure everything is in line, making sure that everyone's having an amazing time. Thank you, Blaine and Barb, for always being there for me, for not just me, but everyone at camp. And I don't think that you guys hear this enough. You guys are doing an amazing job, and keep it going. It goes for Patrick and Amy as well. Thank you, Taylor. For always making the most out of camp and being able to talk to you whenever. Thank you, George Landsberg, Liam Jones, and Jack Recco for making B and C session amazing sessions. And I want you three to know that you are my brothers and will always and I will always be close. Oh sorry. And we will always be close no matter how far we are apart. And also thank you for making Voyager meetings something that I really look forward to. Thank you, Jack Farrell, for always making me laugh and smile, and for being the best cousin that I could ever ask for. And I want you to know that if you ever need anything, I'll always be there for you, and I love you. Now, these next three ones are very special to me. These thank yous are for the three be the, my three best friends sitting beside me. Thank you, Walt, for always making my day. For always making my day. Be able, being able to see you before camp started and hanging out with you was amazing. And I hope that we will be able to do it again. I want you to know that you are a funny, charismatic, and all around an awesome person. I believe that you should be recognized for that. I see the way that you are with your team, and I'm always hearing about how much everyone likes you. Walt, we. We aren't only best friends, but we are brothers, and I will be, and we will be forever. Coming into my Voyager year, I did not know the guy. I did not know the guy who was sitting on my left right now. I had only heard about Thistle, and I was eager to meet him after coming to camp for so long and not knowing who he was. The moment I met Thistle. I knew that we were going to be good friends. Uh, Thistle, I want to say thank you for always being the nicest person that you can be. And even though you don't hear this a lot, sometimes I do think your jokes are funny. <laughs> <laughs> You're also one of my best friends, and I'm so happy that over the summer our bond has grown stronger and stronger. Because I can't picture camp without you. And I hope that I will never have to. Eight years ago, I met the person that I can easily call one of my best friends. Parker, you have always been there for me. Every single summer, I was hoping that you were coming back the same session that I was. I cannot picture camp without you ever, ever since we were eight years old. It has always been TJ Parker ever since our first year at camp. 2010 was my first summer at camp, and I remember it like it was yesterday. I had just gotten off the bus, and I was struggling while, while trying to take all my bags to Coogee 2. The first person to ever come up to me at camp was Parker.
He helped me move my things into the Kuji. And while we while he was helping me, I'll never forget the the first two questions that he asked me. The first one, what's your name? Which I responded with TJ. What about you? And he said, I'm Parker. The second question was, when's your birthday? And I answered, June 27th. Parker was amazed that we had the same birthday, and that made a strong bond between us well, as younger campers. Parker, every year you amaze me by how much you are willing to help others before yourself. I'm happy that I got to see you grow up and become the incredible person that I know you are. Earlier this week, someone asked me to describe Parker in one word. And at first, I couldn't think of anything because Parker is a lot of, a lot of things. And they're all good. But the one that came to my mind first is compassionate. Parker tries his hardest in everything that he does and tries to improve every single day. And finally, thank you, Parker, for making me a better person daily. Last but not least, thank you, Mom and Dad, for letting me come back to come back to camp year after year. I love both of you guys so much. Thank you. She was staring out the window of that SUV, complaining, saying, "I can't wait to turn 18." She said, "I'll make my own money." Make my own rules. Mama put the car in park out there from the school. Then she kissed her hand and said, I was just like you. You're gonna miss this. You're gonna want this man. You're gonna wish these days hadn't gone by so fast. These are some good so take a good look around You may not know it now But you're, you're gonna, gonna miss this Mama, Mama Five years later She's a brand new bride In a one bedroom apartment Tells her it's a nice place She says it'll do for now Starts talking about babies Buying the house Daddy shakes his head And says, baby, just slow down Cause you're gonna miss this You're gonna want this bad You're gonna wish these days Hadn't gone by so fast These are some good times So take a good look around You may not know it now But you're gonna miss this Five years later there's a plumber Working on the water heater Dogs barking, phones ringing one kid's crying, one kid's screaming She keeps apologizing He says they don't bother me I've got two babies of my own One's 36, one's 23 It's hard to believe Cause you're gonna miss this You're gonna want this bad You're gonna wish these days Hadn't gone by so fast These are some good times So take a good look around You may not know it now You're gonna miss this You're gonna want this bad You're gonna wish these days Hadn't gone by so fast
estos. Good evening, and hello D Session. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Charlie Beauregard, and tonight I have the distinct honor of introducing the 2017 Iroquois leader. Three years ago, when I stood up here at the end of my leader's summer, I spoke about moments of impact and how those moments change one forever. Tonight, I'd like to begin by sharing a special moment that has forever changed my friendship with Thistle. It was the winter of 2013, and I was at the mall in the city of Troy, Michigan. I happened to be wearing a Deerhorn shirt as a woman approached me and asked about it. She introduced herself as the mother of Michael Thistlethwaite. I immediately recognized the name and asked her why her son had not returned the previous summer. She enlightened me that that year he had decided to play baseball for the summer and take a year off. Many campers are faced with the difficult decision of choosing between sports and camp. Fortunately, six months later, he returned to camp with a warm welcome and I was honored to have him on my team. Now, three summers later, I stand here beside him as his leader's summer comes to a close. Thistle, you are, inc you are an incredible friend, young man, and leader. It has been a blessing to watch you grow as a camper and even more so as a man over the last couple years. You and I have always had a great friendship that most likely roots from our common interest in Deerhorn, baseball, Detroit sports, and all things Michigan. With the dwindling number of Michigan campers, it was nice having each other by our side, whether it be here at camp, playing ping pong in the Wolf Den, or in the off-season getting a Hunter House hamburger together back home. In the film Into the Wild, Chris McCandless stressed that happiness is only real when shared. I feel safe to say that my summer, as many campers and staff would agree, would not have been as good and filled with joy if we did not share it with you. Before I left after C session, I sat down with your voyagers and pioneers to hear from them how you have led and enhanced their final year as Deerhorn campers. They were itching to share with me many stories and characteristics that they had heard and seen in you. In fact, on Pioneer, Max Placido expressed how this summer had been his favorite summer at Deerhorn to date, and he gave you all the credit for that. Max expressed that for the first time, he did not feel an emphasis and stress on winning. To you, winning and losing was a consolation. Your main purpose was to have fun and to ensure that the little campers around you enjoyed their time here. As cliche as that sounds, it is a lot harder said than done. It is very easy to get caught up in the commotion and competitive energy of team competition. You managed to hold your head high in victory and defeat and continually was a shining example of the creed in many ways. Furthermore, in talking about your leadership qualities with your peers, there was one characteristic that I have always recognized but was further validated in our conversation. As a 15 or 16 year old person, especially as a camper, it can become habit to be very analytical of your surroundings, especially the people around you. At some point in our lives, we are all guilty of judging others. However, your voyagers and pioneers expressed that at any point that they might start to be judgmental, you would shut down the conversation. You would shed a light, teach a lesson, and move on. You truly are too good-natured to pick flaws in others. This simple quality will take you a long way in life. Another very mature quality of yours is your strong integrity. Even though it would have been easy for you to lose your cool after losing almost every scalp game this year, you managed to play every game on the level and win modestly and lose gracefully. You shared this mentality with your team. Your character was reflected in every member of your team. That is the sign of a true leader. Leading is not a solitary role, however. You always had an open ear to the concerns and opinions of your youngest campers. You valued everybody's voice. Not only did you do a phenomenal, jo phenomenal job of leading your own team, but you continually would lend a helping hand with staff as well. When you would show at sports and games, I would be overjoyed with relief for multiple reasons. One, I enjoy spending time with you. And two, you made my job easier. These kids actually listen to you. You are a role model to everyone you come across, staff and campers alike. 
Your kind words and your encouraging high five go a long way in the lives of many. Your self-confidence is strong. You are incredibly comfortable in your own skin and have a great ability in judging right from wrong. You continually shine a bright light for us all to follow. As your camper career comes to a close, remember that you will always be welcome back. Do not look at this night as a closing ceremony or a graduation of sorts. In fact, tonight is a new beginning, a new chapter in the life of Michael Thistlethwaite. Over your years as a camper, you have grown physically and intellectually. Take Deerhorn with you wherever you go in life and you will be a better man. When the times are tough and you are faced with a difficult decision, think about what you learned here and you will move forward with grace and ease. Use Deerhorn, the setting, the people, and the creed as a compass in further parts of your life. Tonight, embrace this moment, hug your friends, thank your parents, take a deep breath and take in your surroundings. Remember this place and hold it close to your heart. Wherever you go, Deerhorn will follow you. Your friends, memories, and the lessons you have learned here are now embedded in your soul and you will never let go. So with great pride and honor, it is my privilege to introduce my friend and Iroquois leader, Michael Thistlethwaite. Ten years ago, my dad and I packed the car and drove nine hours from Troy, Michigan to Rhinelander, Wisconsin. We stayed at the Comfort Inn and ate dinner at the Pub and Cafe. The next morning, we sent off down County C, then took a right down Deerhorn Road. <coughs> I stepped out of the car and looked around, not knowing that this strange place tucked away in the north woods of Wisconsin would become my home. We unpacked, and then I proceeded to have some of the most fun I've ever had in my life. My dad, I'm sure, had fun showing me around the place he and his brother spent summers as a kid. It was weird seeing my dad's name written in Sharpie around camp, but I thought it was awesome and couldn't wait to write my name when I got older. After two years of staying father-son, my parents sent me to stay on my own for two weeks. I was a mess. I was sobbing as my dad left me on the skeeter to play knockout with the other campers. My first year at camp, I cried almost every day. I vividly remember Luke Hinkle, my first Coogee counselor, sitting in Coogee 3 with me, trying to convince me that I was going to have a blast the next 14 days. I went to activities and had fun, but I could never shake being homesick. My second year was filled with much of the same. I would sulk and feel sorry for myself that I wasn't at home with my parents. But camp helps you grow. And when my parents came to pick me up, I hugged them and said I wanted to stay for a month next year. By my third year, I had conquered being homesick and had the best summer at camp yet. I just finished my most difficult year at camp. I also just finished my most fun year at camp. I won't soon forget how hard it was to organize my team for Sunday events or cover an arrow with sand. But I also won't forget how fun it was to be pulled across the soccer field in the chariot or machine gun run after completing the monkeys. Deerhorn changes lives. I don't say this lightly. I can say that for a fact, camp has impacted my life in countless ways. I can say that coming here for 10 summers has changed me as a person for the better. Deerhorn has taught me to be independent, outgoing, flexible, and most of all, to be a good leader. After years of coming here, the lines of the creed are permanently etched in my brain. Those lines have helped guide me to grow as a person at home and at camp. I keep the creed beside my bed every night at home to remind me how important those 13 lines are. When my friends back home ask me why I leave every year to go to a <coughs> summer camp in Rhinelander, Wisconsin, I never know how to respond. How can you describe a place as magical as this? A place so secluded that it develops its own slang and dialect. A place so special that the main reason people come back each year is because of the relationships they've built in years past. A place so life-changing that generations of families continue to send their sons to camp. But you can't. You can't put into words how much this place means to people. So I sit there and I tell my friends that I come up because it's fun, or that I have a lot of good friends up there. Those things are both true, but they don't even scratch the surface on why Deerhorn is important. I made the mistake of skipping a year after my fourth year at camp. I felt sick of it, and baseball was starting to become a bigger and bigger part of my life. So I didn't go. For the first time in six years, I did not make the trip to Rhinelander. 
The next off season, I was again contemplating whether I wanted to go back. An older kid at camp ran into my mom at work. He had a deer horn shirt on, and my mom started to talk to him. He explained how disappointed he was that I didn't come back the year before. He asked my mom for my email, for my email address, and that same afternoon, I received a long email about how strong camp friendships are and how it's so important to keep coming back. I came back for his leader year and haven't missed a year since. That older camper was the same guy that introduced me here tonight, and I'm happy to say we've been closer ever since. Thank you, Charlie. No place has felt more like home than right here. I've grown up at camp from a shy, homesick eight-year-old to a 16-year-old leader who would stay at camp year-round if he could. So thank you. Thank you, Dad, for introducing this amazing place to me. You live the creed at home, and I couldn't be prouder of you. And thank you, Mom, for trusting Dad when he sent me away for two weeks when I was eight to a place you'd only heard of. I love you both so much. Thank you, Ryan and Kiana, for everything you did this summer. You both are the reason camp is as great as it is. And thank you to Donnie, Sue, Blaine, Barb, Taylor, Patrick, and Amy for continuing to share this gift you have here to boys all over the world. But nothing has made this summer more special than the kids I've shared it with. Thank you, Henry Mulliken, for teaching me that Deerhorn friendships know no age. Thank you, Michael Disser, for not only being the most genuine, but also the most kind. Thank you, Soren, Klobowski, Barker, Truckman, for making this team, for making team comp entertaining. All of you are great, and there's never a dull moment with any one of you. And thank you to all my Voyagers and Pioneers for being my closest friends this summer. I have complete confidence that you guys will be great staff at Deerhorn for years to come. Now for these guys. TJ. Camp loves you. I'd always heard about Tej from other campers and counselors, but I was fortunate enough to meet, I was never fortunate enough to meet you until last year. We instantly started talking, and I realized that you were one of the most open and friendly people I had ever met. Your smile lights up the room, and people are gravitated towards your good character. Thank you. Parker, I've never met a more, I have never met a more genuine person in all my life. I also just met you last year, and your leadership and maturity blew me away on Voyager. Thank you for everything. And Walter, we've known each other for a long time. We've been friends since Kuji 14, and there's little that could get between us. You were the funniest kid in camp, and I can't bear the thought of not seeing you until next summer. You're one of my best friends, and I thank you for all the moments that we have shared. And with that, I say goodbye. Not to camp, but being a camper. This place has given me, given me everything I need and more than, you, than I could ever give, give to it. I hope all of you realize what a special place this is, and I hope that you will come back for years to come. Thank you.
drive through the town in the night air When fall comes, they'll part again One turns to another and he says Do you remember When we thought we were immortal In the games we play Always had a happy end game of life, all the roses wither, and time writes its lines upon your face. Work's been hard, the city's hard too Picks up the phone And halfway across the country A brother listens to his blues He says, do you remember When we thought we were immortal In the games we played Always had a happy end In the game all the roses wither in time writes its lines upon your face. <coughs> Lift your voices loud and clearly. Sing for brother. Voices loud and clearly sing for Camp Deer Horn right now. Sometimes I wish that we all were immortal in the games we play. Always had a happy end But I know it's not true Time keeps passing But I'm just glad To spend my time With you Lift your voices loud and clearly Sing for brotherhood right now Lift your voices loud and clearly Sing for Camp Deerhorn right now My name is Taylor Broadbridge, and I'm ecstatic to have the honor and privilege of introducing this summer's Navajo leader, Parker Brush. When Parker asked me in July to write his water campfire speech, my first feelings were happiness and excitement. These feelings were quickly overtaken by a sense of selfishness. How can only one person present this great individual a speech when he has positively affected hundreds of people passing through this camp? I can personally go on and on about Parker, my memories and my thoughts about this mature young man, but that just won't cut it. Parker deserves to hear the magnitude of, of his impact on Camp Deerhorn from all of those his paths have crossed. The time, the time that Parker has dedicated to Deerhorn in his young life is extraordinary. Half of the summers of his life have been spent in the Northwoods. He has traveled over 35,000 miles to and from camp over the years, which is like going around the world more than one time. 
254 days filled with riding horses through the red pines, sailing over Fourth Lake and looking up at the Milky Way in the night sky. 6,096 hours of breathing fresh forest air, bringing smiles to other campers' faces and playing and laughing. 35, 35, <laughs> 365,760 minutes taken up by rest hours with friends and coochies, listening to songs and singing along at campfire rings and splashing that contagious smiles, that contagious smile towards anyone that needs some positive vibes. 21,945,600 seconds. That may sound like a lot, but in Deerhorn time, it seems to be gone in a blink of an eye. Parker Fauci has left his mark, an extremely positive mark on Camp Deerhorn. You were a perfect fit at Deerhorn, according to many. Jake Menz told me he remembers coming back to Deerhorn every year and having your face be the one that he would look forward to most seeing. He stated you'd always emphasize what it is to be a part of the Deerhorn family. Parker's five 15-year-old campers, Philip Myers, Charlie Knox, Cameron Hillsman, Jack Hallinan, and Ben Tempo, described their leaders as bold, persistent, inclusive, a role model, a role model and a beast. Staff members described him as inspiring, mature beyond his years, a savage, undaunting, caring, determined, a surf bro, gentleman, magnetic, dedicated, a brother, proud, unassuring, unassuming, sorry, unassured, loyal, passionate, passionate, humble, responsible, and the man. The four Broadbridge directors Think of you as laser focused, humble, rock solid, and calm. Those that are closest to you at camp, including those around us right now, came up with even more positive words to describe you. TJ thinks of you as passionate. Walt finds you kind hearted. Thistle also commented on how kind you were. Ryan called you well rounded, and Kiana, who wishes so very much to be here right now, said you were very genuine. <laughs> However, the best feedback about Parker that I received was from an older part of the Deeron family, Timmy Harm, nephew to Donnie and Sue Broadbridge, longtime camper and counselor and a former Navajo leader. And I would like to quote what he said. He never took the easy way out and worked hard for everything he accomplished. As a horseback riding counselor, I recall him riding with confidence and always looking to improve. He was the youngest kid I ever knew to go on Gold Star Ride and he rode like someone far older. Parker is a born leader, and his passion to constantly improve and listen to others has made him a man that even the best of leaders would look up to. The amount of positive feedback I received about you is overwhelming. That's just who you are, Parker. Someone that deserves to hear all these kind things said to you. All these adjectives are true describers of you and come from the hearts of those that you have impacted at dear one. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Frouchy, for sharing this amazing individual with us. We know that allowing your son to leave for a month or more every summer must be incredibly hard. But he has positively changed so many lives here at Deerhorn, and that is truly something to be proud of. And thank you, Parker, for dedicating all the time that you have to Camp Deerhorn. I am so proud to call you my friend. And you are an amazing, kind person. And I can't wait to spend many more summers with you up here. Your time here has only begun, and always remember that this place here is always waiting for you, and your Deerhorn family is only one call away. Without further ado, the 2017 Navajo leader, Parker Fauci. As an eight-year-old, I really only had one goal for my summers, and it was just to have as much fun as possible. When my dad came to me one night before the summer of 2010 and asked if I wanted to go to camp, I jumped at the idea. Unknowingly, this would be one of the biggest and most impactful decisions I've made in my life thus far. When I went to camp for the 2010 season, I was extremely nervous. No amount of looking at pictures or reading the frequently asked questions uh, could prepare me for what I was entering. I was just a little blonde kid from California, I wanted to fall in place at camp. When I arrived that first day, it was a whirlwind. I felt the moving in process was a blur and my parents had vanished in a blink 
and then it was just me for a little while at least. It wasn't long after I was dropped off that the buses arrived and I began trying to make some of my first friends. The first person I met that day was the guy two canoes to my right. I was running around the court corner, Fuji 2, and practically ran into him. We exchanged names, and from then on, TJ and I always seemed to be together, whether it be in Kuji's or activity groups. The first summer flew by, and my love for Deerhorn was apparent. When I got picked up, I was already wondering how long it would be until the next summer would come around. The school year between my first and second summers felt like an eternity. Now that I knew the wonders of Camp Deerhorn, uh, it was the only thing on my mind. I was elated when it was finally time to jump on a plane and fly into Rhinelander, fly into that tiny Rhinelander airport. My second summer seemed to go even faster than my first. I already knew how things worked, and I ended up on the same team as my best friend, TJ. I had a blast being a chip that year, and I had the, feel I had the best feeling that at the end of the session, Chip Wall were in first. I really felt as if I had made an impact that year, as my little self managed to get awarded. The next three summers came and went in the blink of an eye. My time was filled with earning stars, competing, and doing things like trying to, to convince Taylor and Kiana to let me stay in riding for an entire day. I would sprint up the stables, <laughs> sprint up the stables after biking crafts just to maximize my time there, and then at the end of the ride, I'd always ask if I could stay. Just being around the stables made me happy, well, with being able to hang out with uh, Kiana and Taylor as well. Those two were my favorite counselors just because we loved the horses and being at the barn so much. I wouldn't trade sitting on that bench, whittling away at a stick, uh, while having a conversation with them for anything. One of my favorite memories from my years at camp came when TJ and I thought it would be hilarious to put one of the pocket knives up the barn between our teeth like out of a pirate movie or something. The look on Taylor and Kiana's face was priceless. To this day, I still have the picture that Kiana took of me and TJ holding those pocket knives in our teeth. The summers of 2015 and 2016 were one of my best summers in, of my camp career. 2015 was very special for me uh, as it was the first time I had ever gotten my perfect award. For years I struggled and failed to, to get a gold star in skiing. That changed in 2015 when I finally learned to slalom ski. I had tried and failed for almost three summers, but in one of the final days of B session, on a day that was freezing cold, I decided to get in the water and give it one more go. I was ecstatic when I felt the boat pull me out of the water for the first time. It brought me great happiness to have struggled with something for so long and then finally be able to conquer it. That summer also happened to be the time I met the guy three canoes to my right. Walt and I overlapped for B session that summer, and I can distinctly and I had a great two weeks becoming better and better friends with him. I can distinctly remember this guy running around with a bandana on his face and his little crew he called the Band of Bandits, and how I so badly wanted to be a part of them. Walt was truly a character from the day I met him. 2016 was another special year to me, as it was my Voyager year. Voyager was something I had been longing to do as long as I had been a camper, and to finally be there, I was ready to have the best summer ever. Last summer was also the year I met the guy in the canoe just to my right. I had heard so many good things about Thistle before I had even met him, of course, all, which of course all turned out to be true. Thistle was a kind, genuine guy, and I looked forward to getting to know, get to know him better over the course of the summer. And then Voyager itself was amazing. I did some of the coolest things I've ever could have imagined with 13 of my best friends. I'll never forget waking up before the sun and running to the east side of Presque Isle to watch the sun rise over the water. When it all came to a close, I cried my eyes out as I embraced all the other Voyagers I had come so close to. But when talking about the best summer, however, the summer takes the cake. There truly is nothing like your leader summer. From winning the treasure hunt and the monkeys to playing leader scout, I've had the best summer of my life. These four sessions seem to have gone by in an instant, I and I would wish nothing more than for the summer to go on forever. However, I understand that all things must come to an end. I'm sad to see the summer go, but now I, I will always have these memories of the best summer of my life. And I advice to all of you sitting up front here. Don't take your time here for granted. Your camper years will go by faster than you'd ever expect. Savor every moment you have here and take every opportunity in front of you, because your time is limited. Most, make the most of every day and leave nothing to regret. And lastly, I'd like to thank some of the most meaningful people in my life. To my parents, I can't thank you enough. Without your love and guidance, I wouldn't be standing here today. Mom, 
I thank you for being strong, and loving me enough to let me go off on my own for that first summer. And Dad, I can't imagine my life without camp. So thank you for understanding its importance to life and encouraging me to go those eight years ago. To the Broadbridges. Sorry. I cannot put into words how blessed I am that how blessed I am you were all so generous to allow this place to be open to anyone from around the world. Some of the most important lessons I will ever I will ever learn have come from this place, and I can't begin to imagine my life without camping. Your unfailing love for this place never ceases, and it is because of that that I know Camp Jihon will carry on for generations to come. To Ryan and Kiana, I can't put into words how thankful how thankful I am to have had you take care of me and the rest of L4 all summer. Knowing you had our backs and were willing to help us with anything at any time made my summer that much easier. Thank you for all the late nights you both stayed up so that we could have the best summer of our lives. I love you both and just thank you from the bottom of my heart. To my voyagers and Pioneer and Scott Badness, all I can say is each and every one of you helped me in so many ways that you don't even understand. Just the little things, like keeping others quiet during team meetings or helping me play skids and spots for Sunday events, all added up. Thank you. To Thistle, though I may have only known you for one summer prior to this, feels like I've known you for a decade. Your own style of humor makes you who you are and you never fail to give me to crack a smile. I'm so happy I was able to spend this summer with you and I can't wait to continue to hang with you for the summers to come. Walt, you truly are a goon. From being in a band of bandits with you to having, to having you practically show me how to sail, you've always been an intelligent friend that I can go to, I can go to for answers and advice. I'm sure you go far in life with your no-nonsense attitude and great work, e work ethic. I'm also glad I could be a part of catching your first fish. Seeing your face light up with triumph and happiness made my day. TJ, what can I say? Man? You're my first friend here, and since then we've been inseparable. I'll never forget those nights as eight-year-olds when we would fantasize about the two of us becoming leaders. Even back then, I knew you'd be a leader. You always had a way of taking charge and getting people to follow you with ease. I'm so glad I've been able to call you my friend for these eight years.
trouble that might bring you down. If you get lost, you will always be found. Just know you're not. I'm gonna make this place your home. Oh, 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 I'm gonna make this place your home. Just heard some amazing words from some amazing people. The leaders have done an outstanding job all summer, and tonight was no exception. Thank you for being respectful and quiet throughout the ceremony, and we ask campers that you remain quiet as you head back to your coochie tonight. Thank you very much.